Hey, this is Paul Mazurkowitz, the drummer from Cannibal Corpse, and you are listening to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. Want to know what's going on in the world of music? Then tune in to the Nothing Shocking Podcast, a non-genre-based, all-ages friendly rock and roll program. Join us weekly for interviews with all your favorite rock stars from the mainstream to the underground. You can find us at nothingshocking.libsyn.com or anywhere you download podcasts. We're putting the band back together. The numbers all go to 11. I'm talking about bands that rock. Led Zeppelin. What about Sabbath? ACDC. Motorhead. Does that mean it's louder? Is it any louder? Well, it's one louder, isn't it? We're not worthy! We're not worthy! Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These guys are 11. I get up above the ground and raise my head days like this. Think I should be dead. One for Satan, two for me. Let's cheat the devil. Welcome to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. I'm your co-host, Jeff Unted, and with me in Dog Bowl Studios is... Coach Nez. You can find the Nothing Shocking Podcast on Libsyn or any podcatchers. Like our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter at No Shock Pod. You can also find the Nothing Shocking Podcast on Rock Rage Radio every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Central Time. Our sponsor is Ragged Records, located in downtown Rock Island, Illinois, in downtown Davenport, Iowa. We'd like to thank the Hong Kong Sleepover for allowing us to use their music for our intro and bumper ending. Tonight's guest is Paul Mazurkowitz. Uh, uh, Cannibal Corpse and uh, Umbilicus. Also Heaven's Gate. Yeah, two uh, new side projects. If you check out that Path of a Thousand Suns by Umbilicus, it's worth it. Yeah, uh, he's uh, promoting uh, the two new side projects, Umbilicus, which is more of a, a classic rock band. And Heaven's Gate is more of an like 80s thrash. Yeah. But uh, let's not forget his primary focus here. It will always be Cannibal Corpse. And he was also trying to kind of re-promote uh, 2021's release from Cannibal Corpse, Violence Unimagined. All right. Let's get to that interview. All right, good night. Good night. Paul, welcome to the Nothing Shocking Podcast. I'd like to introduce to you my co-host, Jeff Unteed. Paul, thanks for joining us tonight. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. Well, it's a true honor to have you. Thank you for all the correspondence. We're so excited to do this tonight. Um, let's just uh, get right into it. Uh, Cannibal Corpse recently returned from a 37, I believe, 37 date tour of Europe. Uh, with, I uh, think it was 38, maybe. Okay, 38, <laughs> but, who's, but who's counting? Who's yeah. counting? Right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, I guess maybe is this the first tour of, of Europe for you guys since of COVID restrictions dropping? Uh, pretty much. I mean, we went to Europe uh, in August of last year for just 10 shows. It was just uh, like eight festivals and two headliners. So, mm -hmm. um, But this is the first time being back on a full-length uh, capacity since 2018. So it's been a few years, right? And, uh, and uh, what a tour it was. It was a, it was a great tour, definitely a, very, a huge success. You know, great fans coming out mm -hmm. and uh, shows were packed and all that kind of, kind of thing. So, you know, it, it, was, it went as well as it could. Did you notice any uh, lingering f uh, COVID fears out there with m people masking up or social distancing or anything like that? Not really. I mean, overall, I would think it just seemed like the old days. I mean, um, yeah, it, it, you know, it's crazy to think. I know that uh, still it's still out there, of course, you know, and uh, and all that. But uh, yeah, you know, it didn't seem to bother anybody. Um, everybody just seemed to be kind of going about it like you would have uh, would have pre-COVID. Mm. So um, yeah, so so you know, and luckily nobody got you know sick or anything like that. No problem. So uh, yeah, everything went smooth and just kind of almost like uh, like uh, it never happened almost. Yeah. So that was that was that was a success in that regard for sure. Fantastic. Oh well, yeah, can you talk a little bit about the venues you guys played and was it uh, all festivals or or did you guys have any uh, uh, clubs? No, it was all clubs. I mean, we played one festival. This was our first headliner since yeah. 2018. Oh, so, okay. you know, being over there proper, uh, you know, us uh, Dark Funeral supporting, 
and um, ingested and storm ruler. So it was a four band package. And, you know, we're playing all uh, clubs, uh, you know, kind of uh, theater kind of settings. I mean, anywhere between, you know, maybe 700, 800 to, uh, you know, about 2,500. So um, it was, uh, you know, there were great shows, really, really, really good shows. We, we you know, we've done great in a lot of markets over there over the years and you know i don't know maybe just not being there for five years new album was out and you know it's not new anymore at this point you know you're kind of still you know still supporting that and um but uh yeah but every you know a lot of sold out shows uh, you know a lot of fans coming out so so that it was you know it was it was good to see because you just don't know you know everyone talks about the the economy over there being a little bit uh you know crazy and all this and you know you hear about a lot of bands uh, canceling tours and things of that nature but you know really to us it seemed like everything just went off as smooth as it could and you know kind of like how we've always done it in the past so uh so i think it was a it was a big success all around that's fantastic um you know with the uh, an established act like cannibal corpse um what is the band's uh, approach to touring as now, hey let's face it you guys are, are are getting older like like we all are um is it still the, the same way do you guys still grind out those those 30 some odd date tours or is it come of less of a load as you've gotten a little bit older or how does it work for you guys in the now well you know it's getting more difficult exactly to kind of do uh longer tours i should i suppose um i mean you know over the years really our tours have been five weeks maximum mm. um you know this one was a little longer right it ended up being well you know we said 38 shows in almost seven weeks and that was definitely a lot uh, longer than we normally do and i think we did it because of not being in europe for say five years it was actually put together kind of like still you know you're doing so much stuff in advance these days mm. so this was in the pro in the works for you know a couple of years now so you're still talking it was happening during the pandemic so you know if offers were there and you have the ability to go i think we just looked at it as like well let's just get over there and do it it's been a while you never know what's going to happen i mean you know so uh but it was long for us right the older we get the harder it is to do these longer uh, tours like that so um uh, you know ho hopefully in the future i mean uh, you know we already kind of talked about uh, talked about it you know and things uh you know if we're if we're if we're in control i think you know we'd like to you know, keep it down to four or five weeks maximum um and you know as long as you got a few days off in there but that's kind of it's kind of where we're at these days i mean we're just getting too old to be out there for uh, a sustained amount of time like that it gets a little tedious and gets a little you know um you know start going a little crazy out there for the most part i mean you know great shows everything works out all in the end and all that but still we're not getting any younger every day it's going to be you know we're going to be getting older so um, you know it, it, it's it's a little tougher, but yeah, we'll try to we'll try to minimize as much as we can to make it still work, uh, you know, for everybody. Oh, very good. Well, let's talk about your drum kit a little bit. Uh, what what do you have? A pretty massive set, smaller set. What? How do you bring your own on tour? We talked to a lot of bands, and they get you know stuff that they they provide it for them out on the tour. So how's it work for you? Yeah, same thing. I mean, of course, in the states, we're able to bring my our own stuff, gear, kits, and all that. So I bring my my drum kit on the on the uh, U.S. tours where you know makes sense, of course. So anywhere else, it's going to have to be rented gear. I mean, the good thing about Europe, you know, we work with a good company that uh, you know I get a, a, a D drum kit supplied yeah. since that's what I use, and uh, and it's a good kit, and I'm able to use it, of course, uh, for the whole tour, just like we were in the states, kind of a thing. So uh, albeit it's not my actual kit, but um, at least you, you at least you have that consistency of playing on the same kit every day. Um, you know that that so that works for for Europe. Up. And, you know, other places, of course, it's not going to work as well. Like, you know, go to South America, you're just at the mercy of, you know, you hope they you get what you want. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. As long as they got the proper amount of pieces and all that, you're going to take what you can get, you know, because that's that ends up being kits every day. You're, you're you know, playing something different. So so for the on this tour, for instance, exactly, uh, you know, had had a, you know, I believe it was a, a Dios, a D drum Dios kit and, um, you know, a nice kit. And that's like I said, what I, what, you know, who I endorse and all that. So I'm, I'm able to, you know, stay with the company and and you know have a drum set supplied for me from them and uh you know that's uh that's the way it goes yeah i use a seven piece kit you know double okay. bass kit and all that and uh you know just three times uh, one floor tom i mean kind of big but not really in the scheme of things i guess these days it's you know fairly small uh you know i don't use a lot of symbols or anything like that either so uh you know but uh yeah i'm kind of crazy i've been using the same setup i guess for years i think for you know now that i look back you know she's 30 some years i think almost from the beginning yeah. i've uh, pretty much kept the same setup i haven't really changed anything you know other than maybe positioning a little bit here and there but 
Yeah, I like to stay consistent. Yeah, very good. Well, um, you know, let's talk about uh, Violence Unimagined. It's the band's latest release you know, back in 2021, right in the middle of the pandemic. Um, how did uh, you and the rest of the band approach the uh, writing and recording process of this album? Is this pretty much status quo for you guys, or did it have to be changed up at all due to the pandemic? Yeah, luckily it was status quo. Luckily everything went as, as smooth as possible. I mean, the, the, what what ended up really happening is, you know, we we finished the touring for Red Before Black, and we knew we were going to take some time off and, and write and record, and we had that all set for April of of twenty. Um, and um, right when the pandemic hit, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, when that hits in March of twenty, I suppose, right? Yes, you know? So um, so we were at the tail end of just kind of getting prepped for the studio. Um, our more concern was, I mean, yeah, we, everything kind of worked really beneficial for us as best as, as as well as it could under all these circumstances. You know how the bands, of course, they want put on an album out there off for a week, and the pandemic hits, and then what do you do? You're, you know, your cycle's just shot. And right. Luckily, we were on that off year, and we already had the album already written, and we were just going into the studio. So that was our concern: Are we going to be able to actually record now? Because you know, with the restrictions, you know, hey, am I going to be able to drive down to the studio, or am I, or am I not? You know, am I getting pulled over? Am I, you know, who knows? We don't know. Is the studio are going to be able to be open are they going to be coming and you know and uh checking things out businesses and all this kind of thing so uh so that was our concern because right it hits in march and we're we're scheduled to go in in april and we did we started on time and it all worked out well the only issue was alex our bass player couldn't uh come down to record in in st petersburg here because he was he's living in portland oregon and he had, uh, he had to do his bass tracks at his home studio which is you know in the scheme of things the way everything went by that's like kind of very minor what what could have happened or could not have happened or something like that so um so other than that everything went smooth really it, we, we were recorded you know everything went went fine on schedule you know because everything was written already like i said and you know we just you you know how we go about our process and uh you know then then the concern was of course like everybody else okay we have a record you're going to be done and now we're still in the middle, middle of the pandemic you, 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 you know like everyone else you just don't know when this is going to end it's going to be over in two months it's going to be over in six months is it going to last for years who knew so of course i'm sure if you you know knew anything about what happened we had to you know we had to delay the record like uh, a lot of people did we, we had to you know, we put it out later than we were uh, scheduled to do that but mm-hmm. you know there was no right or wrong and you just had to kind of play it as it came so we we waited a little bit and of course we couldn't tour you know for that little bit until uh until we did that first tour for violence and imagine so uh so luckily in the whole you know looking back at everything i mean it really it, it went as smooth as it could under all these circumstances really it did so other than just being delayed a little bit like with the with the with the with the touring um other than that you know I mean, we got lucky you sure did yeah well, yeah i know the band on this album has has had um you know m- multiple uh songwriters uh not not outside but in the group uh you guys all contributed right. to the lyrics and stuff can you talk a little bit about the writing process with a band and how that works is that is that pretty normal or how, how does it normally work for you guys yeah it's pretty normal i mean it's pretty standard these days i mean when you look back at how we started and you know how you used to write and um, you know, collaborative efforts more or less in the beginning you know, years of the band, and you know, then we hit around. I mean, it was you know, it's been a while now. I guess I, you know, we hit like the bleeding, and I remember, um, you know, Alex wanted to write a, like a song by himself and all that, and he did. And I think it was, uh, I think it was fucked with a knife he wrote, and that was like the first song that we wrote, where just one guy wrote it. You know, all the the whole thing, you know, all the riffs and had the arrangement and all that. So, so that was kind of the start of the new way of writing. And then, you know, if you look at all our uh, albums and you read the credits and you know it'll say right song by webster you know lyrics by webster song by barrett i mean and that means really yes exactly alex wrote his songs you know rob wrote his songs i mean none of the other guys had any influence in it if anything i'm the one kind of the x factor of course because i'm kind of having a drum on all of them (laughs) and uh you know maybe i have to uh you know do some different things or work with you know i work with rob pretty tight i mean alex ends up writing his stuff um for the most part, everything's done when he when he writes a song. He's got a vision with the with with drums and all that, and kind of the same thing with Eric. So so I think we've been doing that, you know, a better part of of, of tw- you know twenty years or so of just being, you know, we have the individual writers, which is is uh, is good. We got great writers, and uh, you know, keeps everything a little bit. Uh, 
different, so, so to say. And I think everyone's got their styles. I mean, the, the, the fans really can recognize a lot. Oh, you know, that feels like a, you know, that's a Rob song. That's an Alex song. I mean, they, they, they got their ways of writing, but it's all cannibal. So, so mm-hmm. that's kind of how we do it. You know, and violence wasn't, was no different. If you look at the, you know, if you look at the credits, you know, everyone had a couple of songs there and then, you know, and then the lyrics might be, uh, you know, it might get a little, little different there. Um, I, I wrote one of Alex's songs lyrically. I haven't done that in like a long time. Um, Ceremonies of the Flight I wrote and then you know writing uh, Murderous Rampage for Rob um, so uh, you know we're all contributing we're all you know the lyrics might be the only kind of different area there but musically these days exactly it's one guy and they got their songs and then it, there you go it's always going to be we got Alex's songs we got Rob's songs we got Eric's songs and, and that's how we operate these days fantastic well yeah I think uh, did Eric, didn't Eric join re- uh, recently during during this period of writing this new album huh? can you talk about his uh, um bringing him into the band yeah yeah it was you know it was right before we started writing um of course violence unimagined that he was brought into the band and uh you know he it was yeah you know, we already had some songs written of course then we bring eric in and he wanted to contribute right away and we wanted him to of course you know he's a great writer he's a great guitar player of course he's part of the band now so um you know by all means we want him to contribute any any you know so he wrote his three songs for the record and uh you know and did a great job and you know just another another added flavor to the cannibal uh style i suppose because you know we've had member changes of course over the years and you know we're lucky to have great writers um for every Every member we've had, um, and uh, Eric just brought his new uh, vision for what a cannibal song should sound like in his his eyes, I suppose. And uh, you know, so it was it was a pretty easy transition. We've known him for a long time. We've known him as a uh, as a as a friend, and uh, you know, as a fellow musician, being in you know bands that he was in, Ripping Corpse and Morbid Angel and Hate Eternal and all this. And then of course he re- he produced what now five records of us. The first one being back in 2006 with uh, uh, him producing Kill. So so it. It was it was a very smooth transition bringing him in as a player that you know the only thing different now exactly where you know he if anything he's got more work now because he's <laughs> he's writing songs and having to produce the record and yeah. play on the record and all that kind of thing so so but it was uh, it was it was it's great to have him and uh, you know it's been amazing and uh, you know we we you we know having a great time such a great guy. Oh, fantastic. All right, so we're going to switch gears here yeah. and, and start talking about a little bit of your side projects. And uh, totally love Umbilicus. Yes. Oh, um, cool. Awesome. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I, I grew up listening to 60s and 70s uh, uh, classic right. rock. Uh, my dad was a big uh, classic rock. Nice. Even though, but, dead, you know, kind of borderline into the, uh, what we would call the 70s heavy metal of sorts. Yeah. Sure. Um, yep. Yep. Uh, so can you kind of give us a little bit of a rundown of, of the members of, of, uh, of Umbilicus? Because maybe there's a lot of our listeners that don't even realize this is a band. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, that's, I'm um, glad you guys uh, like it first off. I mean, it's, uh, it's definitely something that's really dear to me. I mean, that's, uh, it, it, you know, that's the music I really truly love. I mean, this has been embedded in me for forever, you know, since growing up, um, you know, born when I was born and all that and growing up in the 70s. And, and you know, I think it's just embedded in me. And uh, I really, really love just rock and roll, you know, yeah. just good old rock and roll. And, uh, and so uh, it, it, it's a project that that, um, you know, a little bit, a little bit of backstory on this, uh, you know, to kind of, I almost have to mention back, um, it was about 20 years ago, I guess it was a little over 20 years ago, right around 20, uh, 2000, um, um, Jack, when Jack Owen, the original guitar player in Cannibal Corpse was still in the band, he ended up leaving in 2005, but Jack um, had a had a, had, a, had a same liking as me, just, you know, we really loved, his, you know, rock and roll and old stuff from the 60s and 70s and, and all that, so we did, we started a project back then, and I think it was you know ninety nine or two thousand, and this was in Tampa, of course. And um, we had a we 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 had a bass player, a good friend of ours, Vernon Blake, who's actually in Umbilicus. I'll get to that in a minute. And um, you know we we wanted to we wanted to write some rock and roll. We wanted to rock out, you know. Mm-hmm. So so we wrote a bunch of originals, and we um, played two shows in Tampa actually at a bar called the Brass Mug, and that would have been around <laughs> two thousand one or so. And um, and that said, we just played originals. I think we had one we we had one cover song we played an old grand funk song off their first album the red album mm. and um you know and actually the singer was james rivera who is the singer in hellstar he was mm. living down in tampa for a little while 
and he 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 sang uh, the two shows uh, live with us. But we wrote these songs. We had like 15 originals. We just never did anything with it. That was it. We played these two shows. Band was short lived, maybe a year or two, and then it just kind of fell apart. Yeah. We made some demos. We never had a proper good recording of any of these songs. I mean, you know, so it just kind of fell to the wayside. And then Jack's out of Cannibal, and then you know he moved away. So so here we are. Okay, that just fell apart. And yeah. Vern and I, he's a the bass player. Vernon Blake, like I said, who's in Umbilicus now, and he was in this project. And the project was actually called Path Path of Man was the name of the band. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been always talking about it. He's still my one of my best friends, and we always talked about, man, it'd be great to get the band back together to you know to do this. And yeah, we yeah yeah. And then this never comes to fruition. We're you know I'm busy with Cannibal and you know and all that kind of thing. And uh, so it fast forward now, right? To it ties in with actually with the Cannibal thing because uh, when we did Violence Unimagined. Um, we just finished the record and that's like how I was saying now, now, now reality setting in. Okay. It didn't affect us recording or writing or anything, but now it's affecting our future of yeah. touring and kind of moving forward. So what do we do here? Right? So now we knew we were going to have time on our hands. So I got a hold of my buddy Vernon and, and I said, Hey man, you want to, you want to get this project back together? Now's the time. I mean, uh, I, I, you know, no, no cannibal tours coming up in the near future. We don't even know when that's going to happen, man. I just want to kind of like, Hey, if we want to, revisit this this is the perfect time to do it we're not getting any younger you know he's my age we're both in our 50s and everything and you know we we, yeah we're not going to want to wait another 20 years i mean just all lined up perfectly like that you know we only live once we're not getting any younger hey let's do this we want to do this we love it so so anyways we get a hold of we um and Jack doesn't live here in in Florida anymore, so he wasn't kind of. It just didn't seem like he was interested, anyways. We did contact him, and it just wasn't going to work out. He's not living here, and all this. So, so we were like, you know what? Let's just start fresh. Okay, Vern and I can be in the band. We got, you know, we got the bass player, got my me, me, and let's find a new guitar player. So that's what we did. We we went out. We talked to some people. We had some mutual friends, and you know, hey, anybody out there? Well, uh, a, a guy named Taylor Nordberg was brought to our attention, and we kind of knew him through other people yeah you know he's in the scene and all this and he was actually and is actually the guitar player in the absence and he is currently the guitar player in deicide right yeah yeah. um yep so he had actually it's kind of funny because he got into deicide after umbilicus was formed i mean um i know he (laughs) he he came in a little later but uh but but taylor um you know we we had him come out we we you know we got a recommendation oh yeah taylor might be a good fit for you guys you know bring him in so we brought him in and we started jamming um and then immediately we're like man this guy's awesome great guitar player great guy you know great vibe we're having with him and all that and he was up on our same page of what we wanted to do and he was in immediately so it was kind of right then and there we have the music for umbilicus the musicians were all were set the three of us so we start writing some songs and everything and you know and, and definitely the mentality was at this point um where i was you know let's let's do something with this we have to make sure we do something with it we're not going to you know we're not going to let happen with what we did with path of man you know Mm -hmm. let's let's write some songs let's you know let's really concentrate on this and 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 you know make some uh, what we feel are you know some great 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 uh, music and let's let's get it out there let's get it out to the masses you know because you never know i mean if not anything it's just it's for fun right you know you just can you left your mark you can say you know i can be proud of a, a of a rock and roll album you know that i put out if at all anything right so you know so we were working on uh, writing some songs and all that and then we just needed a singer so so um you know we were we were contemplating some people we had a couple people in mind and then uh and and then taylor actually was talking about maybe singing but he's 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 got a good voice but not really a singer and then he mentioned this uh mentioned a guy that he he did some you know some recordings with um a guy up in canada named brian stevenson and he said man this guy brian you know i know he's up in canada and all this but man he's got an amazing voice he sounds like the, he's like he called him the canadian glenn hughes yeah, you know cool. that's what how yeah. He, yeah that's how he describes them right so we're like you know what all right you know what do we got to lose here why not give them give them a couple of the songs you know at that point we already had kind of the songs already really done and recorded actually it, that was our last piece of the puzzle was getting a having a singer you know to to you know, to put the icing on the cake here. So, so we wrote all those songs with no, you know, kind of like with no vocals in mind, a little bit of vocals, but we gave it to Brian. We gave him a couple of songs and actually the first song on the record, hello future, 
um, was the first song that we gave to him, and he sends us back a quick demo that, you know, after like two days of just having the song for like literally like a day, and he was like, yeah, I just threw this over the top, kind of what he felt immediately, and we were blown away. We were literally blown away, because what you hear on the record is pretty much what he came up with, and we were going, my God, this guy's a genius. I mean, yeah. he is a great vocalist. He's got a great, I mean, he just fit, fit perfect. We were, we were just in awe of this, you know, so right then and there, we were like, man, Brian's got to be the guy. I mean, it's a little tougher because we're living in Florida and he lives up in Canada and, you know, pandemic's happening, all this kind of stuff. But, but man, it just felt right. You know, it just felt right to have him in the band. I mean, just what an amazing, you know, piece of the puzzle. And uh, like I said, the icing on the cake, really. So, uh, so that's, 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 that's how it all came about, you know, and then we ended up finishing. He, he actually recorded all his vocals up in Canada because of the pandemic. We're not, we're not with the travel restrictions and, right. you know, we put the album out, what, last November now? And, you know, there you go. So it's Brian Stevenson uh, from Ottawa, Canada, our singer. And he was in a band called Old James, actually. If you'd look them up on, say, YouTube, they got some videos. And I know they did some touring a little bit. They were, you know, uh, him and his brother was playing drums and he had a band. Yeah, Old James, if you look him, look them up. Uh, Brian's a great, great guitar player, great great bass player and all that and you know he's just a all-around great talent so so we're lucky to have him but uh right and then we got taylor nordberg like i said on guitar and you know he's in deicide now and and still in the absence and you know he's got a few other bands uh, going as well and uh you know myself and and vernon blake who plays bass here and uh and, and kind of side note with vernon blake he actually filled in for shane for on uh, uh from napalm death on a mm -hmm. tour like three years ago <laughs> shane didn't make it over to the states this one tour and and vernon uh ended up filling in and played bass for him on a tour here a couple of years ago so um so but yeah that's that's that rounds it out that's the that's the lineup and that's that's the band and we just played our first uh live shows back in february uh we played three shows here in tampa opening for all well, not in tampa in florida i should say one in tampa um opening for uh king buffalo Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of fun, man. We had a great time, you know, you'll finally get to get the band to the, hit the stage and all that. And, uh, you know, so that's where we're at right now, though. We're looking, uh, we're, we're, we're hoping to, you know, get some songs together for album number two and, you know, and then we'll see what happens. We're you know, kind of just taking it as it comes. Like, obviously it's a side project. So, you know, we're working around Cannibal Corpse, working around DSide and, you know, working around everyone's schedules here. But uh, like I said, regardless of what happens, man, you know, we'd love for things to happen, you know, maybe get on a, you know, a tour, you know, play some shows, who knows, you know, we got some festivals, but I mean, it, like it, it, at least, you know, we've, we've got a record out there, you know, and uh, you know, it, that's that's the most important thing i mean you know we can we can be happy that we left our mark on the in, on the world there if that's all we ever do so but <laughs> but that's not all we want to do we want to keep it going here so we'll see what the future holds fantastic yeah. stuff oh, i know i love the whole album but one of my favorite songs was uh, stump sponge do you have a story oh about nice that one? awesome damn that <clears throat> nice man that's one of our i'd say that's a good one yeah it's one of our uh it was one of our first songs we actually wrote. I oh, think cool. actually, I think I think it actually might have been the first song we ever wrote. Nice. Um, you know, and I'm glad you liked that, man. Yeah, thanks, man. That's uh, you know, it's funny because I'm you know I'm in the band and all that, but then every time I listen to the record, I'm like, man, we we wrote some good stuff here. Yes. I really think we got some good songs here. You know, you know, Taylor's a great guitar player, man. He wrote some really catchy riffs, and uh, you know, I said Brian obviously sounds great, and you know, I just love the way it all came together for me as a drummer, just you know, playing by feel, you know. So Sitting back there, I mean, those songs, uh, other than when Taylor wrote them and sent them over to me, I mean, I put them together within, you know, every song came together within a day. It wasn't like much thinking. It was just all, it had to be, it had to be by feel. That's the way I wanted to do this. I wanted to play it by feel because that's, I think that's important for this kind of music. So, uh, but I appreciate it, man. Thanks for, uh, you know, the, the kind words there. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, on the flip side, uh, Heaven's Gate is your other side project. <laughs> right. and what yes. is it? The ode to uh, '80s thrash style heavy metal. Yeah. And, and Jeff and I are both huge fans of the of the thrash metal movement of the '80s. But um, right. can you give our listeners a little bit more of an insight on this band and how it all came together for you? Yeah, that's a, that's a crazy. All of a sudden, I'm in three bands. So like, I got nowhere. <laughs> like, what you know, what the hell am I doing here? You know, I mean, I know it was. Uh, it was crazy, but yeah, that was that was kind of like okay, I you know told you the umbilicus story. That was kind of you know really something passionate for me, of course, and that's what I, I really wanted to do. That after, of course, having done it you know twenty years ago and all that. Well, um, you know, just sitting home, 
uh, one day, you know, whatever, and getting a, getting getting a few messages from Tony from Municipal, you know, mm -hmm. he, Municipal Waste. He's just, you know, he moved back to uh, St. Petersburg here, Florida, after living, of course, in Richmond for the longest time. I know he's from here. He's got family, and he, I believe he was uh, – I believe he was, you know, this is where he's from, you know, um, uh, from St. Pete. And he just, he moved back a few years ago and he, uh, he, he gets a hold of me and said, Hey man, you know, really wanting to start up a band, another band here, you know, I'd love for you to drum. And then I'm like, all right, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> kind of like, all right, you're asking me, I'm going, okay, this could be cool. It could be fun, you know, because I kind of know what we're, we're going to be going for in that regard. Right. That the old school kind of, you know, eighties crossover kind of stuff, you know, I mean, you know, punk Rocky meets mm -hmm. the thrash meets, you know, you know, said the crossover kind of stuff. And then I was, you know, I know they're big fans of that Tony, of course, but I'm looking at myself going, man, yeah, I love bands like, you know, the earlier, you know, the early influences for cannibal myself as a you know as a as just a musician you know loving the the accused and early yeah. dri and you know coc i mean and, and all that so uh i'm like you know what yeah why not this sounds like a, what, what you know you only live once and it sounds sounds like it'll be fun you know let's do this you know so um so tony had a couple of guys in mind um you know to play uh, play guitar and play bass and and we got a you know we got uh we got uh, um, uh, Mike. Mike Goo plays uh, guitar, and he's in a band called Warthog. Mm -hmm. And I know they've they've done some touring. They've been around for a little while, and he's been living in Florida for a couple of years. So he recruits, you know, he recruits Mike on guitar, and then we got Jeff Howe who plays in a Reversal of Man and uh, and Horsewhip, this band uh, from down here. And they've done some stuff too. They got some albums out. They you know did some minor touring and all this, but uh, you know, but he's he plays bass. Jeff plays bass, and Mike plays guitar, and uh, we. We just get together, you know. All right, Mike, what do you got? Mike's got some riffs, you know. We start writing some songs, and and you know, just uh, kind of uh, you know, fun in that sense of it just being that old school kind of mentality. Uh, mm -hmm. Not uh, so far from different from from Cannibal these days, you know. How I was just, um, you know, how everything works in in, in our camp. I mean, I, it just th this way of doing things with Heaven's Gate just reminded me, and the way we do it is just reminds me of a, like when I was starting out playing when I'm 17, yeah. 18 years old, you know. Just old school you know just like go for it and uh you know not, nothing too crazy nothing too complex of course you know songs are shorter you know simpler riffs simpler arrangements all that kind of stuff you know which is which was right you know uh, it, it was a great change of pace because i definitely it revived me in that sense of feeling like exactly like i'm young again in that way because cannibal is so far removed from the old way we used to do things like that so <laughs> so that's how that came about and Everything moved pretty quick with that because I think uh, having all four guys down here in Florida, of course, you know, we were able to kind of get together a lot more, say, that as a band than Umbilicus could. And, um, you know, and man, and Tony's, you know, the, especially out of the out of all of us, he's such a, you know, such a workhorse and such, you know, he knows so many people wants to get going, you know, do things, play shows, you know, let's get things together. So so it was pretty quick. We wrote, the, you know, five songs and uh you know, we uh, this was what last year, um, year and a half ago now, and we we recorded them and put just put out the EP. You know, the the Heaven's Gate EP. We just put out five song EP. Um, you know, not not a lot of material, but uh, you know, but they wanted to get something out, and I guess that's you know what you do in this kind of a genre. And uh, you know, we seem to be gaining some uh, you know momentum and some you know some a fan base. We've already played like nine shows throughout uh, Florida so far. And uh, we got one. As a matter of fact, we're playing Saturday. We're playing in Melbourne, Florida. We're playing this Punk in the Park Festival. Oh, nice. You know, some, uh, yeah, that's happening this Saturday in Melbourne. And then we're actually, we're opening for Voivod in St. Pete on next Wednesday on the 17th. Um, you know, so that'll be a, 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 a cool show. And um, and then we got something lined up in, uh, in Texas for uh, three shows coming up in in July here, and it'll be our first out of out of state uh, kind of little thing happening. So, so you know we're 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 doing some stuff, and uh, you know we're just uh, having fun with that. Uh, it's kind of the same as Umbilicus. Of course, we got to work around schedules. We got to work around mine and, and Tony's and Municipal, and the other guys are working, and they got their bands. So, you know, we're just trying to have fun, of course, and uh, you know work around everyone's. Uh, a busy schedule but man both band, both bands are you know we're having a lot i'm having a lot of fun and uh you know i'm i'm, I'm really happy to be a part of, of both and uh and it's just uh yeah it's just who i would have never thought you know five years ago that here i am 
getting older and you know playing in three bands as opposed to uh, <laughs> just can't just cannibal which is hard enough and uh you know busy enough so uh, um but but yeah that's pretty much the gist of uh of that so Oh, so cool. Yeah. Well, I know Cannibal Corpse originated out of Buffalo, New York and you know, in the eighties, but you guys are located out of Tampa now and you talked about the other bands being out of Tampa. Take the take COVID out of the picture. What's what's the Tampa rock scene like down there? Uh, you know, it's. I guess it's okay. I mean, you know, it, it's. It, it was huge. It seemed like it was a lot bigger back in the. I don't know. I, mean, I can't even say if it was a lot bigger. I mean, it was always known as the death metal capital of the world. I suppose <laughs> back, back in the early '90s, and I, I guess that had a lot to do with everybody coming to Morris Sound to record. And then there was a lot of bands that were from Tampa. You got you know bands like Death and and Obituary and then Deicide were here. Then you know, we, we get lumped in here because we're you know, we've been here for thirty years, you know, so a lot of people call us a Florida death metal band when, you know, well, re- obviously yes, we started in Buffalo. So so I mean, uh it, it seemed to have a lot of bands that just ended up you know, residing here. And the scene was always good. I mean it didn't seem like any better than anywhere else for the most part. But these days it's hard to tell. I mean I mean I, I don't go anywhere I don't go to shows. <laughs> I, I I'm kind of such a you know far far removed from any of that. So so but I mean a lot of stuff comes through. You know you're going to get a lot of shows. You're going to get a lot of bands. So so it seems to be still thriving fairly good, fairly you know decent. We just played a show here in St. Petersburg uh, the last two tours we did, and man, it was our biggest shows we ever had. You know about two thousand people. So that was you know that it's great for us, and, and I guess that means you know we'd hope that the scene is thriving for for the death metal anyways. So, so, but yeah, it seems to be doing fairly, fairly well. But yeah, said I'm not the not the greatest to to fully answer that question. <laughs> oh, no. because, uh, do... um, me me just staying home all the time these days. So well, we're starting to see more and more shows pop up in our area. So it's refreshing and it's uh, exciting. Oh, nice. I, I can't go to all of them, but I wish I could. Exactly. Well, hey, well then at least you got them. But I know when you can't make them all, that's tough. But yeah. at least you have some, so that's good. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, we're running out of our allotted time for the evening. So I have one last question for you, and then we'll leave you alone. Deal? No problem. Okay. So yeah, I, no, no problem. I ask this question to all of our guests: uh, the mystery, the mystery of of rock and roll. It, it's gone now due to the dawning of the internet and all the different social medias that are out there. For you, the um, musician and the fan. Um, what do you prefer? Do you like this uh, new age of, of accessibility? Because if, if there was no internet, we wouldn't be doing this with you right now. Or do you miss the uh, the mystique of what rock and roll and heavy metal used to have? Yeah, it's a tough one, you know. I know it is a tough one because obviously look what the internet and everything and technology has brought us, you know, where you got everything at your fingertips, bands, you know, being able to do so much and, and know so much. I mean, it is cool, but I, I mean, I guess just my, my old school mentality or being, you know, from the generation prior to that, yeah, you kind of do miss the old mystique of the old days, you know, where you, you didn't know much about bands and, you know, you had to get your information from going to buy a magazine and, you know, what little info you did get from that or what have you, you know, or it's lower or it's word of mouth kind of stuff, you know? So, so I think, uh, you know, I kind of miss the old metal, uh, you know, the old mystique of the metal back, uh, in the old days like that because of the not knowing and not having everything at your fingertips. So, but then, you yeah, it, it's just a tough one, right? Because on the other hand, like we we're just saying, you know, it's good to stay connected with the fans, and and uh, you know, so many people can. Uh, right, we wouldn't be doing this right now if it wasn't for that technology, and right. um, yeah, so it's a tough one. But I would, I would have to say, you know, just looking back and how I grew up and all this, you know, it had that certain mystique. Now, maybe when I maybe younger, I would have liked to to be like it is now because. You know, you can think back, well, what could I would have known or could have known yeah. or this or that, which, you know, you don't know any better because you just don't even think of that, of course, when it's, you know, that's all coming up in the future and you're you're just living in the now. So but I look back at uh, how I grew up and, and man, it was it was fun going to record stores and finding new bands that way. And, you know, that's how you, you got into some, you know, a lot of the bands. I mean, yeah. you know, right. You're reading about them in a magazine. If not, you're going to the record store and go, oh, look at this record wow all oh, that looks cool let's put it on wow this is awesome you know and that's how how you found out new music and how you got into bands you know now of course i mean who who's gonna do that you know that's like it's so it's never gonna happen so so i 
I, I, I miss that mystique and, and that kind of uh, that way of how it used to be. But uh, but that's, uh, you know, a thing of the past, I guess. I guess I'm just happy to be a part of that, you know. Mm. I always tell people I'm just happy, you know, I, I got lucky, I suppose. You know, everyone's got to be born when they're born. And, you know, I just happened to be born in that whole uh, – in that whole transitional era in, the, yeah. in you know, with, with metal, you know, with, with look, from being a teenager right then at that time in the eighties and the early eighties and then growing with the music and the changing of the scene and it, it, it daily, right. You know, look, look how much change has happened <laughs> in the metal scene from 80 to 90. I mean, it's unbelievable yes. or from 82 to 85 or 85 to 88. I mean, it's, it, and we were a part of that as a, as a, as a, a hungry teenager, that's, you know, not even sure how, what, you know, you're, you're getting into, your your your, uh, your bands and not even sure what what uh, you're fully into yet because you're still getting molded and all so i mean i i feel very lucky to be a part of all that and and and, and having those transitions and being a, a part of the movement so to say so so that was uh it was a great era to, to be growing up in and uh you know and if it wasn't for that right you know cannibal wouldn't be what they are and uh you know, obviously, I wouldn't be uh, the drummer I am or the musician I am. So, you know, everything happens for a reason, and you know, and uh, it's the way it goes. But yeah, exciting times, you know. Absolutely. Definitely. Well, well said, by the way. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, thanks. Before we uh, let you go for the evening, is there anything that we left off tonight that you would like to plug or promote? No, nah, no, nah, man. I mean, we talked about both bands, all three bands, you know, touring and all that. I mean, I just, you know, really just appreciate the interview and, you know, hope the listeners get some, uh, have, a, have a good time listening and all that. And, uh, you know, just keep supporting, uh, supporting the, the scene and the bands. And that's all I can say. So I appreciate the interview. Fantastic. Well, this is how things are going to work out. Uh, yeah. when, when Jeff get the, when Jeff gets this all cleaned up here, he's the editing wizard. Uh, I'll, su- I'll send it to you immediately. Yeah. And please share sure. wherever you can. We'd appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, sure, man. Awesome, awesome. Well, I, I, that's whenever you get it done. So I appreciate it, man. Thanks, guys. Fantastic. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Paul, thank you so much. Yeah, Paul, thank you. It was an honor. Oh, oh man, no problem, guys. Thank you for All having right. me. It was fun, fun time, man. I appreciate it. All right, man. Take care, guys. Have a good one. Good night. Bye-bye. All right, you too. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.
ever take from you, then you plug out. 